to have everybody here with us today. My name is Tony Shoemaker. I have the privilege of being the pastor here at the Middleville United Methodist Church. That's quite loud. Um, today is the last day of God is Our Rock, a series that we've been doing. Uh, so we're going to work on that, bring it all together, wrap it all up today. Now, you may notice it's a little bit lighter, isn't it? Yes, it is. My golly. If you have email, you may have received on Friday all of the information that you usually get in a booklet every Sunday. We wanted you to have all this information earlier so that you get here and don't go, oh no, I forgot about that today. And so your Fridays and your Saturdays, um, if you did not have email, we have copies over there each week. You'll find copies over there on the stand of all of that information. If you would like to receive the email and didn't receive it last Friday, Please contact the office so that they know that we have the correct email for you, and we will add you to the list of people who get that. So you get all your information on Fridays, and we will lose a lot less paper and cut down a lot less. Paper. Let us begin worship with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We've been going through the Psalms and hearing you from the Old Testament and understanding the rock of our salvation that you are. And today we move through the Psalms and into the New Testament and hear the new ways that you are redeeming us. And today we offer communion, the Lord's Supper, to all who would come. And we offer it without restriction, without boundaries, as we always do. So Lord, we know your love is boundless. And we know you love us in spite of the things we do. You're always willing to redeem us and offer forgiveness. So today, Lord, we call upon you. May you open our hearts and open our ears to the words which you would speak to us today. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we offer this prayer. Amen. So let us speak to the Lord in song. Shall we stand together?
seconds to greet each other. Children, come on up for rhythm section. Whisper to the next person what you thought you 
heard. What you thought you heard. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> you want to pass it on? I think she's kind of shy. Tell Parker. Tell Parker what you just heard, honey. What did you just hear? Tell Parker. What you think you heard. What you think you heard. What you thought you heard. together and learning together to grow in you. We ask that we remember that when things do come out of our mouths, that it's only the truth and it's only for the good of everybody. In your name we pray. Amen. would like to give our heartfelt thanks for the use of your facilities. 
While we are trying to help people in the community, we are fortunate to have neighbors such as yourselves to lend a hand when needed. We appreciate your ongoing help as we make the transition to a new facility to better serve our members and our community. We look forward to partnering with you all as we move forward in making our community a better place to live. If we can be of assistance in the future, please contact us. In solidarity, Dan Snowden, President. So, your generosity extends much, much, much farther than we know. It's amazing how God uses what you offer back in your time, your talents, and your gifts to further the kingdom. We, uh, I know that um, Gene Peterson and they got together a little bit with food pantry stuff and now they're able to network together uh, where they maybe didn't know each other that well before. Uh, so we're just thankful for your generosity and may you continue to be generous as our tithes and offerings are received this morning. Into us. 
be seated. Uh, one of our prayers of joy this morning is a congratulations to Aaron and Josh Bremer, who were married here in the church yesterday. A uh, beautiful service. They both wrote uh, their vows to each other. We all got to hear it for the first time yesterday. It was beautiful. Also, for the family of Mark Garbo, uh, Mark passed away on Friday morning. Also, for Dorothy Cohen, um, she is recovering from a fractured neck and some fractured ribs. She had surgery on Thursday and it went very well. And she said to tell everybody that she's here with you in spirit today. Uh, Bianca Pratt is up and using crutches in a wheelchair, so she's getting mobile. Very, very good. And congratulations to Presley Snyder, who was the homecoming queen this week. Yes, absolutely. If you have other prayers, concerns, or joys you'd like to share with the congregation or just share with me, you can fill out that little yellow piece of paper in front of you in, the, in your pews and place it in the basket back there after the service today. Let us come before the Lord in silent prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our rock, the rock of salvation, the rock of redemption. And when we say our rock, we include everyone, for everyone has the opportunity to come to you, to come in relationship with you through his Son, Jesus the Christ. And Lord, I also lift the name of Rick Schenkel this morning as he passed away earlier in the week. <laughs> we know that you are the rock for so many, and we think about Christine Shumway, and her son Lee said that my mother exuded Christianity. And Lord, may we, throughout our lives, work on that, being able to project the light that you place within us, that we not keep it under a bushel, but we share it with those around us. And Lord, as we go through the coming weeks and months with changes in weddings, changes with people passing away and new births, may we continue to see the cycle of life that you provide into this world. So Lord, in this day, we thank you for all those who have gone on before, all those you have gifted in our lives today, and all those who are coming in the future to be part of our lives as gifts from your own hands. And the biggest gift from your own hand, Lord, was sending your son Jesus into this world. And today, as we share the communion table, as he did with his disciples in his day, that we share it with us and all of his disciples here this day. We share the prayer in which he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and our power, and the glory. Excuse me, let us remain seated as we say to God, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Lord is amazing.
for this morning is the three in one, the one and only. I kind of struggled with how to title this one. My second choice was God the Rock, this is how he rolls. <laughs> so whichever one works for you is fine with me. But today we finish this four week series that we've been in called God is my Rock. The first week we learned about blessed assurance. Of, of a God who is our solid rock and how life is not always good, but God is good. All the time. All the time. Yes. Yeah, very good. The second week we learn that God calls us as Christians to a higher ground, above what the world calls us to do and above what the world calls us to be. Last week, we learn to look for God today. Not just when our eternal life, our earthly life ends, and that we need not only physical shelter from the elements of this world, but we also need emotional and spiritual shelter from the elements that we encounter in this world. Today we look at God as a Redeemer, and the question comes, what does God say about this? Well, our reading is going to be very brief and short today. And Tony forgot to put the lectern back up. <laughs> you got it, Diane? I'm sure. But you're going to hear probably as much from the Bible as you will hear from me today. I said I will be quoting a lot of scripture as we trace the three in one and the one in only today. We'll start with the words from Psalm 19, which may be familiar to you. Psalm 19 is a thanksgiving lament to God, listing the many ways. God blesses us as his creation. The psalmist offers both supplication and adoration in this brief prayer. Diane, would you share with us Psalm 19, verse 4? 14. <laughs> May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That is our focus text for today. Today we often hear these words at the beginning of a sermon or at the beginning of a message. But it, I'd like to change it to plural where it says, May the words of my mouth and this meditation of our hearts here together be pleasing in your sight, Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Most of us know what it means to redeem something. We have reward cards after all. And isn't every place you go to, do you have a reward card? That drives me nuts. <laughs> we have frequent flyer miles. All kinds of loyalty programs. Number one in our message notes this morning. To be redeemed by God is to be forgiven of our sins and the restoring of our relationship with God. We will do that today through communion. In Old Testament times in which the psalmist lived, for Jewish people, redemption came by keeping the law of Moses and offering the proper sacrifices at the proper times. It was what you did. In essence, you were earning it much like the loyalty programs of today. In time, the priests would put over 600 laws that were created by the religious leaders of the time that you had to keep to be eligible to go to heaven. No small feat. God, the creator, is the one and only, is the one and only way for his creation to be redeemed. So how does that challenge us here today? We don't live in Old Testament times. We don't live under the six, 600 laws. Things have changed. Wow, oh, there's that word again in church you shouldn't say, change. Things have changed twice since the Old Testament. We now live in the New Testament times, and we also live after the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's look in the Bible for the first change in how redemption comes. John 1, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to read this through twice. 
In the beginning, the Word and the and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing has made was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that light was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So what is the word that they're speaking of here? The word is Jesus. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. So let's reread this, substituting the name of Jesus for the word, and it'll make more sense. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. Jesus was with God in the beginning. Through Jesus all things were made. Without Jesus nothing was made that has been made. In Jesus was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Hear the difference? Sometimes we get caught up in the word being this, but really the true word of God is Jesus Christ. This is what we consider the written word. The word of God, Jesus, was sent into the world. God, in the form of his Son, came to offer redemption in a new way. He was using Jesus to offer redemption to people. Jesus would offer his body as the last sacrifice for sins. No longer would they be required to bring certain offerings at certain times and lay them on the altar. Jesus would be the final sacrifice. And Jesus was the one who was now restoring the relationship with God. It now comes from faith in Jesus. It's not about all those 600 laws you might be keeping and earning it with the frequent flyer miles. Now it is by faith in Jesus. As God's one and only Son, Jesus said a couple of very specific things about this. We're all familiar with this first one, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever, it's an important word here today, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Number two in our message notes. Whoever believes in Jesus will be redeemed. We look in the Old Testament, it was pretty much about the Jewish people, and they listed all kinds of people that weren't worthy of God's love. But here comes Jesus and says, whoever believes. Hmm. In John 14, 6 and 7, before his crucifixion, while, taking, while talking to the doubting disciple Thomas, Jesus says these words, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Jesus the free and one comes into the world. No one comes to God the Father except through Jesus. People who believed in Jesus would be known as Christians. Christians. That's a change from Judaism, from Jewish to Christians. That is a change. After Jesus' final sacrifice and resurrection, Proof of life after death, as Jesus had been saying, a second, a second change would happen. Humanity, God's creation, had God the Father, God the Son, we've got two parts, the holy duo. Now humanity would experience God's presence in a new way after Jesus had ascended to heaven. Jesus promised this third way, which makes up the full Holy Trinity. We hear it in John 14, 26, and 7. Jesus says these words. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father shall send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Don't be afraid of change. 
God is working in not so mysterious ways. The Holy Spirit is leading us. The Holy Spirit would be and is for with humanity, be with us for eternity. That's a change. Again, to know that the Spirit would be with us to help guide us. The Holy Spirit inspires us to seek redemption with God. It illuminates our being to seek the Creator. It is an advocate and a teacher. It is God in the form of the Holy Spirit which inspires writers, musicians, calling each of us to use the gifts and graces we have been given. I had an incredible Holy Spirit experience on Friday. It involved Vicki Marsh, a lady by the name of Sue in Florida, and a man by the name of Mark Garbo. Vicki called me. What time was it, Vicki? Do you remember? Is she over there? <laughs> yes. Hey, Vicki. In the morning sometime. Vicki calls me and tells me of this gal, Sue, whose brother is going to die in a couple of weeks, in a week or two, and he's asked for a pastor. And it's like, okay. So I call Sue and I say, I think I can come on, on Saturday before the wedding. Um, I think that'll work out. And she says, okay, I'll call my brother. I mean, this is really a spirit thing because there's so many moving parts here. So she calls me back. It says, Brother Tom tells me that Brother Mark isn't doing well. He's having a bad day. Could you go over today? Yeah, I could. I had to go see Dorothy. had to go to a visitation. had to go to a rehearsal. had all of these things to do. I said, so if I, if I hustle and get up there, I can stop and see Mark because he wanted to see a pastor before he passes away. Um, so, okay, it works out. So I get up there. I go in, and it's obvious that Mark is not doing well. So his girlfriend says, Mark, there's a pastor here. And he shakes his head, yes. So I anoint him, and I pray for absolution, that he be received in heaven, that all of his sins be forgiven. And I went over and sat in the chair, and I, I told his girlfriend, Cindy, I said, Cindy, don't go very far, because I think he's really close to passing away. And I said, do you want me to stay here with you? Because she was the only one there. And she says, it doesn't really matter. If you'd like to, you can. So I just stayed there, and I just started praying for God's mercy. Within about four minutes after anointing him, he passed away. I was going to go on Saturday, which would have been too late. But the Spirit kept kind of prompting us all the way through this to be in those places at those times. And God works in mysterious ways, we say, but no, he doesn't. We just don't get it. But if we're faithful and we follow that leading of the Holy Spirit as Sue did, as Vicki did, as Tom did, as Cindy did, as Mark did to ask her pastor the day before and as I did as a pastor, it takes all of that momentum from the Holy Spirit to allow things like this to happen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. It is the Holy Spirit that gathered all of the writings from three to four centuries after Jesus' resurrection to be a witness to what became the Holy Trinity. They put together this Bible some three to four centuries after Jesus' death. And in here we find the Holy Trinity, the three in one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is known as the Bible today. There are people who are still stuck thinking they have to earn God's love by their actions. So what are we going to do about that? Jesus gave instructions after he rose from the dead just before ascending back to heaven. It's known as the Great Commission. And folks, no matter what you think a church is, this is the only purpose of the church is this commission. Hear these words. Jesus said, just before ascending to heaven, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you to the very end of the age. Go and make disciples. 
We are called to be disciples. Number three in our message notes this morning. A disciple's task is to make new disciples. Plain and simple. That is the baseline of why the church was created. That is the baseline of Jesus coming into the world to redeem us. To be disciples so that we can help make other disciples. He wants as many people into the kingdom as possible. It's not about keeping people away because they don't look right, act right, smell like right. It's about inviting all people into the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Revelation 1.8 says at the end of the Bible, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is who was, who is to come, the Almighty. My God is my rock and my Redeemer. The three in one, the one and only. This is how he rolls. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to relearn, remember, Maybe for the first time realize the process that you use to change things from the Old Testament to the New Testament. From God the Father, you added God the Son and Jesus. And then you added God the Holy Spirit so that we would have this permanent, throughout our lives, spirit within us that would prompt us. Would prompt us to come to Jesus and say yes to Him as our Savior. Would come to a communion table and remember, have our sins washed away and walk away clean as a lamb. So Lord, in this day, may we sense your presence through the Spirit. May we remember that you are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us remain seated as we sing together, redeemed.
we do fall down, we do things we wish we hadn't, and we do things we don't even realize until after we've done it. And as I shared in the Old Testament times, it was about what you did and how you earned it. But today we celebrate a sacred moment in time when Jesus shared the Last Supper with his disciples, the twelve that had been following him, some believe for right around three years. He wanted them to spread the gospel, spread the good news, but he also wanted them to share in the baptism and also this Lord's Supper so others would know what redemption came by. And redemption in Jesus Christ came by the shedding of his body, the breaking of his body and the shedding of his blood upon a cross. Well, you got to believe those 12 people that were there didn't necessarily get what he was doing that night until the first time they broke some bread after that and said, hey, remember when Jesus, before he was crucified, broke the bread with us and said that this is my body and this is my blood given for you? Let's keep doing that. I think he wanted us to keep that tradition alive and we continue that tradition here today, offering redemption, offering a new start in Jesus Christ. Now, in the United Methodist Church, there are no restrictions on who can come to the table. All are welcome to the table of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Catch. <laughs> Camera's got good hands. On the night in which he gave himself up for us and for all of humanity, he was at the table and he took the loaf of bread and he picked it up off the table that day in the upper room and he lifted it to heaven and he thanked his Father in heaven. And then he broke the bread, which would symbolically signify the breaking of his body upon the cross. And he passed it to each one of them there that night in the upper room as he passes it to each one of us here today in this room, saying, this is my body broken for you. And when the meal was over, he took the cup and he lifted it to heaven and he thanked his father. And again, he took the cup and he passed it around the table there that night in the upper room as he passes it and offers it to each one of us here today saying, this is my body. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Heavenly Father, we ask that you pour out that third part of the Trinity, your Holy Spirit, upon this fruit of the vine and wheat of the field, that they may be for us, represent your body and your blood. That as we take it into our body, we feel the redemption that you offered with your body and blood upon that cross. And that we go away today restored and redeemed to go out into the world and Share your love, mercy, and grace with all who we encounter. In the name of Jesus, the one and only Christ, we pray. Amen. Know that there is gluten-free bread if you prefer that today.
only feel fed and redeemed, may you feel blessed. And may you go out into the world and be a blessing to others. We have a couple of announcements. Uh, first one, grab the information sheet. We want to name this newsletter into something catchy and fun. So you have an opportunity to help us name that in the coming days and weeks. So uh, we look forward to that. Sue, would you like to share your announcement about Crop Walk? Hey, y'all got these in your bulletin? Crop Walk, 50 years old. It looks very good, doesn't it? Okay. This is uh, our envelope downstairs. If you need still to pick one up to uh, raise money for Crop Walk, I do have a few more downstairs. And if you would be so kind is to please donate to the people that are walking. It's in our church here on the 13th. We are the host. So it would be really nice if we had a nice showing. So I appreciate it. And everybody walk for Crop. Two weeks from today. Joey. Yes. And one week from today, the Newberry team will be sharing at both services about their experiences this summer. The youth are headed to Camp Manitoba this afternoon. Whether we are indoors, outdoors, or on the lake still remains to be seen. But we are headed out there this afternoon. Okay. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Come on up here. Hi, everybody. We have the Swiss State dinner coming up this Friday. I hope you all can be there. Should be pretty good. Um, and if you uh, Friday have a few minutes and you can get there early and help us with some things, we probably could use another hand or two. But uh, I think we got pretty much all the food covered that we got on the list out there. Lots of pies and desserts coming too, so thank you for everybody who's helping out. A lot of generosity going around. Oh, yeah. 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 I had the uh, opportunity today with the youth group to serve communion to them and uh, to have a kind of an intimate format for them, so I look forward to doing that with them today, sharing them what redemption is and being able to just share that time um, as we kick off the youth season. So let us close this song. Shall we stand? Victory in Jesus.